We're live. We are live. Hey, happy Wednesday. Chef Jason hanging out with my friends at the Colorado Beef Council. We are here in our kitchen studio tonight getting ready for Live with Beef. That's right. We used to do it on Fridays, but it seemed like everybody was busy on Friday. And then we switched to YouTube, and it seemed like, Julie, like nobody came to YouTube, right? So now we switched back to Facebook because apparently you all hang out here on Facebook. I'll tell you, we have a packed studio tonight, which is pretty solid. Uh, we have guests, which I think is the second time in the history of the studio we've had guests, so we're pretty excited about that. And we have a rancher with us tonight as well, because you have a lot of questions. We get a lot of questions from you about, let's say I want to buy Colorado beef. How do I buy Colorado beef? What does it look like? And I'm telling you, I brought the foremost expert. Uh, one of our good friends, Sally Miller, is going to hang out with us. Come on, hang out. Let's say, let's talk. Welcome. Hey, Jason. How are you? Good to see I'm you. Good. So, Sally, you tell them what you do. I'm not going to tell them. They go. So, I am a rancher from northeastern Colorado. We have um, cow calf operation in a small feedlot. Um, we will buy calves from others, and um, sometimes we raise them all the way out, and sometimes we sell um, after they've been um, started on feed and are ready to go a little bit further. Some of the most beautiful ginormous bulls I have ever seen in my <laughs> life. And they're all red. Yeah, they're all red. They're red Angus. Uh, Kevin, her husband, and I went on a tour of the bullpen, the bullpen, yep. Yep. and I will tell you, uh, you, you, wow, is all yeah. I'm going to say. So one of the things we talk about when we do our lives is we always promote, uh, if you want to buy local beef for your fridge, freezer, belly, all that good stuff, go to coloradobeef.com, go to the cooking tab, uh, and there's a beef locator mm -hmm. that will help you find locally produced raised beef. What is always uh, the biggest question I get from people is, how do they do it? Like, what's the best way? To, do I buy a, a half? Do I buy a quarter? Do I go in with some friends? So there's, that's the beauty of it. Yep. There's options. A lot of options. And the beef you're going to get from the producers is going to be awesome. Yeah. And so if, you know, if you get a, a, it depends on how much meat your family eats. Right. And how big your family is. Yeah, because uh, all the animals are different sizes, well, right? That, yeah, there's Which that. Which determines, yep. you know, if you buy, I mean, if you buy a, a, a half a cow, mm -hmm. right? Half a steer. Mm -hmm. How much beef would you get on average? How much do you think beef you would get? And let's say a steer weighs 1,000 pounds. So if so, you split it in half and we say there's 500 pounds to a half, you don't get all 500 right. pounds. Right. And right? so, yeah, so, you know. Realistically, most steers today are going to be closer to 1250 to 1300. Okay. Uh, but then, when you when you kill them, they do they they have a head that's pretty heavy. Yeah. They have guts that come off and a hide that comes off. Bones. And so that once you do that, though, you get to what we call hanging weight. So the hanging weight is after the kill, uh -huh. before the processing into ground beef, steaks, right. roast, right. that kind of right. stuff. So hanging weight. Let's say they went from uh, 1200. Let's say 1200 pounds. Yep. What would you guess hanging weight would be after? 60%, 60 to 64%, somewhere okay. in there. And so, what's the math? 720. Yeah, Thank you, 720 pounds. See, I got well, some uh, Listen, <laughs> I am not that smart. Uh, <laughs> but I will tell you that there is no way I would ever guess 720 <laughs> pounds. But our studio guests, we bring brilliant people to the studio. That's what we're telling you. Yep. So if you, if you net. Well, you don't. You don't. So that's like so the that's, second gross. That that is that's that's what most ranchers are going to sell you based okay. on hanging weight because it's a really easy weight to calculate, and it's then once you get to net box is really dependent on how you want it cut, and okay. so there's it's a lot of them are going to say okay so then you go to the pack we've taken it to the packer it's hanging here. But then you tell them how you want to cut. So that's when the cut sheet comes that's in. That's when the cut sheet comes so in. So a lot of, a lot of, and I bought beef and, and we raised beef for a little bit mm -hmm. just to figure out what that looked like and how that was done. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably never going to do that again. <laughs> a lot more work than I signed up for. But it's, it's once you determine if you're getting a half or a quarter, then you get the cut sheet. Right. And the cut sheet lets you pick how you want that half or quarter further processed. Right. Into what steak, we have steaks, we have chops, we have roasts. We're not chopped steaks. Yeah, I was saying, not chops and beef. Steaks. But, you know. <laughs> we have steaks. We have roasts. We have. Um, you got ground beef. You ground, got brisket. Everything. You've got short ribs. Yep. Um, there's stew meat. There's lots of different things that you can have made. Um, and the steaks. There's various different kinds of steaks. It really depends on how your family eats. And, and then depending on that, it it could be like right. Depending if you get more roast or less roast, like. 
if they have to take more bones away, there's a little bit more loss. So it's kind of a sliding scale. Yeah. So let's say 1,250 pounds. Let's say you on a half, you net 720 hanging weight. Then you process take, it. You're going to get think? about another 60% is what you're going to get. Yield. It's going to be your yield. Okay. So 60% 60% of, of 720. 720. That's about 440, 450. Yep. And so you're going to get, so a half, you're going to get about 220 pounds worth of meat. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, it does, it is surprising that you only get yeah. out of that big of a critter, you only get that much meat because of all the bone that has to come off. There's fat that has to come off and some of, and some of those. Items. And if they're heavier fat, yeah. right, that, that's right. going to be a little bit right. more loss. And then how long? I mean, if I'm buying 200 pounds of, ground, of, of beef, how much ground am I getting and how long should I expect 200 pounds to last me? I know that's kind of a loaded question a loaded because question. it depends on how much beef you eat, but I mean, on average, how much do you think, you know, if I bought, if I ended up with 200 pounds net, how long do you think that would last a family so, for? So for my family, yep. we eat beef primarily. Right. We don't eat a lot of other proteins I've because heard, that's listen, just I've, the way I've talked to your husband. Eat. I understand. And a half will last us basically a year. A half will last you a year. For yeah. a family of three. Yeah, right. we feed an extra quite often. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, but um, but yeah, so you know, it's one of those where some some families, if they eat a lot of other proteins, a quarter lasts them, but some of them, that they that half is about right. So it's somewhere in that neighborhood of quarter to a half for a year. Yep. Um, and if you've got it in a deep freeze, no problem whatsoever for it lasting that year. And um, deep freeze is one of the freezers that you have to manually defrost. Right. Not the one that auto defrosts, yeah. which you, you don't get want it half in your, the time. You don't want it in your refrigerator freezer. Okay. If you're sticking the meat in your refrigerator freezer, you want to use it within a couple months. Okay. Because that refrigerator freezer defrosts all the time. Yep. And so it just uh, it, yeah. builds up ice crystals. Builds, yeah. Ages it. It turns yep. gray. It yep. smells old. It gets stale. Yep. And it goes in garbage, which is not the what you beauty. Want to do. The beauty of a lot of packers now is the cryovac packaging. Yep. And so that seals it so nice that, yeah, you get a long shelf life. So I heard, I heard a couple things, right? I always hear people say, man, I just don't want that much ground beef. But ground beef is kind of a byproduct of, of yeah. what you're ordering too, right? So you can pick kind of how much ground you want, but if you're gonna order certain cuts more or less, you may end up with more ground beef. If you don't want the roast, yep. you're gonna get more ground. They grind it. Because, yeah, if you say you don't want certain thing, what happens to it, it becomes ground beef. Yep. My family, we, it's so easy to pull out a package of ground beef. You can make tacos. You can yeah. make it just about it. You know, I can make chili. you about anything. I can make chili. I can Sloppy make. Sloppy Joe's. Yeah. I know. And so, so it, it's quick and easy and fast. And so we use a lot of ground beef. But those roasts are super nice for throwing on the grill and throwing on the trigger. And so, yeah, it's. All that good stuff. All that good stuff. So it depends on what you want. Yeah, it's interesting. Just as, as people buy beef, all the questions that mm -hmm. come up. Why do I get this or why do I get yep. that? So definitely talk to your rancher, talk about the cut sheet, and then are the, would you say most processors are the same? Like they cut, they, they're not. So they don't have a standard cut sheet or does it kind of vary? Each, each processor will have their own cut sheet. Okay. Now, I mean, there, there's the standard cuts, so it's not like they can make things up, but there are some processors that do things a little, um, allow for a little bit more variety than others because there's a few chuck roast steaks that some processors will pull out. And there's some processors that, it, since it's not a standard on their standard cut sheet, they're gonna charge you a little bit more for it. So if I tell them, like tonight we're doing tri-tip, if I tell them I wanna get into the sewer line and get that tri-tip out. All, I think all of them will get you a tri-tip. Most of them will do it? Yep. Awesome, yep. and that's good. Yep. I so depending on what cuts I want, mm -hmm. could be the difference between which processor you went with. Or... Yeah, yeah probably not, because you're, you're pro if you talk with the processor, yep. tell them what you're looking for, they're gonna get it for you. Okay. Um, they, and the rancher really is the one that's going to have to set up the processor because processing is set up a pretty close to a year in advance. We have to book, even though the calves are not anywhere close to being ready, we have to guess. And we come as close as we can guess. So you make, it, have, you make an appointment a year I have, out. I, make, I have appointments for March and May of 2023 at this point in time. And that, that, because that's how far out you have to make yeah. And I, I know all... There aren't every now and then you can slide one in extra, but pretty sure. much you're making you're making appointments. And then you're raising days, animals so. for those dates, basically, yeah. and yeah. hoping that they grow accordingly and they're yeah. finished and ready to go by then. That's that's the hope. But 
but the ranch that's what the ranchers have to do and we are pretty good at you know yep we know where we're going to be and we can get there it's awesome yeah. so like we've always said you can go to coloradobeef.com uh cobeef.com and go to the cooking tab on the cooking tab there is a beef locator map and it'll introduce you to uh, the Millers, it'll introduce you a lot of local uh, ranchers, producers that uh, can provide you with great Colorado beef and all different breeds. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. So if you have a taste for... If you, if you want, want grain-fed, if you want grass-fed, if you want natural, if you want, I mean... Angus, Hereford, yeah, Limousine. The various breeds. Yeah, if you want yep. a certain breed, what, it depends on what you want, you can look it up and you can find it because, yeah, we're not... Colorado Beef Council does not... Uh, discriminate on their website right. it's, all about <laughs> it's, beef. All, it's all about beef it's all and about so beef. it's your taste buds none of the beef is better or worse for you than another one yeah it's your taste buds taste preference they're all going to taste just yeah. a tad bit different right and it's you know personal preference personal preference personal preference but Jason right. you're the one that's going to make it taste awesome well we hope so right like that's the ultimate goal um anything else anything you want to share about about buying local beef I put it on the spot, right? I was to say, um, you know, why don't we get started and see if some yeah. comments come in. If we get a question or two, we can answer perfect. it as we go. Perfect, perfect. All right. Yeah. You heard it. Let's get started. So tonight, we are doing beef tri-tip tacos. And the great thing about uh, this recipe is it's, it's wonderful for uh, now that your kids are back in school, now that uh, maybe the kids are coming home from college or they live at home and, and you have active family life and things are going crazy, this is a great protein-packed uh, dinner that really stretches i mean you out of a two and a half pound tri-tip you know you can easily feed your family of four maybe have some leftovers to take on the road tomorrow with you if you want to make a no no leftovers no well not to you, you, you it depends do you have two teenage boys or right. do you have you know i'm a girl dad so we always you, have yeah, leftovers, say, right? Have leftovers. So listen, yeah. based on who you have at your house, you may have <laughs> leftovers. And you can build a nice little handheld to take with you. Um, I love tri-tip. Man, I'll tell you what, from the, from the sirloin, uh, tri-tip delivers. It, it is lean, so it's definitely right there. One of the 33 lean cuts of beef, which is amazing. Uh, you get a, a protein pack that's solid. Uh, and I love the, the like flavor of tri-tip's amazing. It is. Minerals, okay. iron. Uh, people always ask why I eat beef. Why do you love beef so much? I enjoy that flavor of beef. I really love the minerals. I like, it's almost like feeling like you're connected to the earth. You know, like I like eating beets because I can taste the earth. Okay, I can yeah. taste the minerals. I can taste the iron. Uh, in beef as well, I feel the same way. And tri-tip delivers like perfectly. So let me show you what we got here. And we will talk a little tri-tip. Now we've got a lot of different toppings for our tri-tip taco. So is there, a, uh, is there a family favorite you have when it's taco time? Ooh, taco time. Well, you know, you got to have a salsa. Salsa, yep, know, yep, but, yep. But that corn looks uh, pretty darn good, too. It's, it's corn season here yeah, in Colorado. it is. Yeah, and that so Olay for fresh... Sweet sweet corn is pretty solid. Yeah. Right? What about citrus? Like a little lime yeah, on the top? A little lime squeezed on the top and a little bit of cilantro. cilantro. It's, yeah, you know, and you got to have some cheese because yeah. gas yeah. for the dairy industry has Co some cheese. Cotilla, Cotilla cheese is one of my favorites. All right, let's glove up here. Stop tri-tip. Uh, tri-tip is interesting, too, uh, because... There's basically three different kind of ways the muscle fibers run. Usually three, sometimes two, depending on the size of that tri-tip. Uh, something you want to be aware of as well, because if you slice this uh, not against the grain, if you happen to slice it with the grain, uh, you're going to come out with some pretty tough chew, if you will. So can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Camera? All right. Mm -hmm. So as you look at this tri-tip here, we trimmed this down today. Uh, it came uh, with a nice, big, huge fat cap. Now, I'll tell you what. Uh, I have an extra one that is at my house with the fat cap on it. I'm actually going to try roasting it with the fat cap on it. I say, I like to, you cook it with the fat cap on, and then you gently take the fat cap off. Yeah. Because that fat juice dripples in and keeps it moist. And, See? Yeah. There you have it. All right. So look at, the, look at the way the muscles are running here, the fibers. You've got some strands that basically start back here and actually run out this way. So basically from here to here, all those muscle fibers are going that way. Then you get a clump that runs here to here that kind of go that way. Then you have that little try on the end here, this little tip that runs that way. So if you're looking at the way those muscle fibers run, you've got a piece that goes here, you have a piece that goes there, you have a little bit that go there. So I always say just pay attention to this. This is something that's important to know uh, when, you're when you're cooking it, seasoning it, uh, and definitely when you're slicing them, because you want to make sure you slice against the grain to get that optimal tenderness. And especially when you're eating tacos, 
I mean, who you wants to like, yeah. chew on your taco? Yep. No one. Yep, no so you one. slice it, you cut, you, you, then you turn it, and you slice it some more, and you turn it again, and you slice it some yep, more. Yep. All right, a little bit of oil, just a light coating of oil. Uh, I use oil as a binder. You could use um, tallow. Tallow is one of my new favorite. Uh, usually if I have a lot of fat in my brisket, I'll render some of my fat off. Uh, tallow has been a huge um, addition to the uh, binder industry. Uh, you could use um, other animal fats if you prefer. Got quiet all of a sudden. Did you hear how quiet it got when I said you could use other animal fats? Don't use other animal fats. Tallow works. All right, season this up. Pick your favorite seasoning. Um, I always caution when you're seasoning beef, don't season it so heavy that you taste the seasoning. Right. Season it so that you taste the beef. Uh, I don't want someone to say, man, that seasoning you put on there was fantastic. I want someone to say, man, it's the best beef I've ever had, the best tri-tip I've ever had. Because it kind of tells you that you're seasoning the meat so you can still taste the meat, not overpowering it. And I like to get every little nook and cranny. Julie, how's the camera going over there? It is going fine. She's like, I just love this. It's like a family affair in here, man. We got everybody here. Old beef council family. We got talco family. I'm telling you, solid stuff. So there you have it, just like that. Get that all seasoned. Now, what I like to do, and I know you'll see it on TV a lot. I like to. Uh, a lot of the restaurant chefs, TV chefs, like to let their meat rest for a little bit. I'm like a 15, 20 minute guy. I just want it to rest for a little bit. I want it to soften up just a little bit. And then let's head outside and show you. Uh, we're cooking this on the smoker today. Beauty of tri-tip, it takes smoke wonderfully. If you're doing charcoal, if you're doing pellet, if you're doing gas grill, even goes good in the oven. But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a, you like pellet grills. I like pellet grills. We're, we're pellet smoking kind of people. So let's head outside <laughs> and take a look and we'll show you what we've got. Uh, and through the magic of TV, we already did this ahead of time. <laughs> and it's sunny today because I'm not sure why. All right? But, all right, so here we are at the pellet grill. We've got our uh, probe in here, our temperature probe. And basically, we a sample just to make sure it was good. Uh, we've been smoking this for about an hour and twelve minutes. So uh, we are at uh, we just hit 128 degrees. So we have a really nice uh, color on this. We have a really nice cook on it, and we didn't overcook it. I always like to take tri tip a little bit under, let it carry over. We always call it like the carryover finish. Uh, that way, it just it, it doesn't get overcooked. I always find when you're cooking beef. If I cook this to medium and I pull it right at medium, it's gonna carry a temperature over. So I like to take it a temperature under and kind of let it do that carry over finish. So, I mean, what do you think? Do we look it, all right? It looks beautiful. We look all right? But yeah, you always gotta let, you take it off and you let it sit on the counter for 10 minutes before you slice it because. Yep, that's, and that's what we're gonna do? Yep. All right, so what I'm gonna do here, I actually have another tri-tip that we have here. I'm gonna put this guy on. We're gonna sear that off crazy, crazy hot. And then let's take this guy back in the kitchen. We're gonna let it rest for a minute while we get tacos ready. It's Ooh. like the beef meat camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody likes tacos. Sanitize our board a little bit here. And usually what I try to do when I've identified the grain, I try to watch how I place it on the cutting board or on the uh, uh, smoker as well. Then it just keeps it in my mind, like, okay, this was, it went on this way, this is where the grain is, we're good. Our peppers as well. Yeah, the last thing you want to get, are we good? Yes. We're good? We are good. All right. Any uh, questions rolling in we need to address, or anybody we want to say hi to quick while we're meat resting? We have people from um, Michigan. Like it? Uh, we have several people saying, did you say try tip? And um, a comment that they, you can also ask your processor to how thick do you want your steaks. Yes, you can. When yeah. you do your cut yeah. sheet. On, on my cut, on, on cut sheets that I have seen, you get anywhere, you know, you can do three quarters of an inch, you can do an inch, you can do an inch and a half for your steaks. Um, I've seen where they, you know, they say this is, a re this is what most people like, but you have your choice. You can make them thin, you can make them thick, and it depends on how you want to cook them and how fast you want them done. And yeah. For you, some what do you like? Thinner, thicker, medium? I, I tend average? to go the inch. Okay. Um, it's yeah. The the three quarter of an inch is too thin. It's like a minute steak. Yeah. Yeah. But you get you know so that's that's just my personal preference is the inch. Um, you know you get them too thick and you know then it, roast. it takes it takes too long to cook. But I have some three inch thick. Uh, cowboys in there. Okay. I'm just, you know, and, I'm doing a reverse sear on them tomorrow. And you know if you, if you know what you're doing with them. 
Yeah. That that sounds pretty cool. It's but I bought them specifically. I bought them thick specifically for that task. Right. Right. But like normal everyday hot and fast grilling, I'm probably inch and a half. Yeah. Where is the tri tip from? Sirloin. Comes from the sirloin, which is right before the hind quarter, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Right before that. Yeah, and it's a good, I'll tell you, it's a good cut. Uh, as the animal thins out a little bit, it, it's, the nice thing about it is there's some articulation as that animal moves, so you get really good chew mm -hmm. and texture. It's not tough. You just get a really good chew. Almost, I would say it almost eats like the texture of New York strip. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice, I uh, got a nice texture to it, a nice uh, bite mm -hmm. to it. Uh, and it's lean. The beauty, the beautiful thing is, it's super lean, but amazing, amazing flavor. I like Terrace Majors too. Those tend to be my favorite. Those petite tenders or yeah. mock tenders. Mm -hmm. They're just they eat wonderfully. They're like tucked in there, and they just. Unfortunately, oh. there's not many of those in a critter. Just two. like there's not many uh, two tri tips in a critter. Two. And so yeah, two. there's that's that's part of the problem of. It cracks you know. me up how you guys call them critters. <laughs> and I will tell you, and, and the best thing is, is it's it is. I have a lot of friends that ranch and produce animals, and they all call them critters. Yeah. And it's just, and, and I always, it, it always just makes me chuckle. Like, not in a bad way, but. All right. Any other questions, comments, hostilities? No. No hostilities? No. I love it. Wow. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. We're done. Yeah. All right. So, what I'd like to do on here as well, then, is I'm going to start looking at that texture or those uh, muscle fibers, and we'll cut that guy that way. Yeah. I try to find them and identify them. So there's one. And then we're just going to slice this off on this end. So once you find it, you want to Yep, I'm coming that. in. How important is the knife you're using? Yeah, mm. super important. I would say the knife is probably the most important. Uh, you want it to be sharp. Um, you want it, 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 you're going to be more careful with a sharp knife than a dull knife. Because you know this knife can give you a little little nick if it needs to, mm -hmm. uh, and you're always you always tend to be a little more cautious. Now, see the way those muscle strands are running, those muscle fibers. You don't want to cut with that. If imagine that as a rubber band, if you cut with that, you have a long, stretchy piece of fiber to use. If I cut against the grain, look at that, much much finer, eats better, chews better. Cut this thinner because we're ha uh, having tacos tonight. That's definitely the way to do it. And then on this end as well, start thin. Uh, usually on tri-tip, if I'm eating tacos, I go thin. Uh, if I'm doing tri-tip for an entree, like that's my main protein for the night, I'll go a little bit thicker, um, just so I have something to maybe cut at my table. But easy, right? Just pulls apart. Super easy, pulls apart like that. All right, should we build a taco quick? Oh, yeah. Let's see what that's going to taste like. All right, so I like to load up my tacos, kind of let everybody kind of eat their way. I'll just use my hands, apologies. A little mm. corn salsa on there. Some a, little, a little cotilla cheese, I love that because it gives it a little snap of salt. Uh, and then we will cut a little, uh, we have some roasted Anaheim on there as well. That we smoked and roasted on the grill. We have someone else who likes to use the culotte for... The culotte? Yeah. yeah. But that's good too. Absolutely, yeah, the culotte's really nice. And where does the culotte come from? Uh, I have no idea, actually. It's a top sirloin. Is it top sirloin? Yeah. Jeez, it's like stumped the chef knife. No, 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 the, the, the guest yeah, yeah, yeah. mentioned it. So Yeah, so, and I think the bavette actually comes out of the uh, sirloin as well, if I remember right. Could yeah, be. Right? See, they're all over the place. All right, a little bit of lime. I think it does. Like. Bavette? I'm trying to think. The only time I've had Bavette was at a French restaurant. I thought it was flank. All right. A little bit of cilantro. Taco time. So there you go. There's a beautiful, easy, fun, tri-tip taco for you. Uh, and again, if you're doing it on charcoal, you're going to get that beautiful, robust charcoal flavor. Pellet. We love. We both love pellet because it just drives. I think everybody in here has got pellet grill. Uh, it just drives that smoke flavor in. Sorry, Julie's like, yeah. if Julie just gave me that look like... Do not have a pellet grill. We will we'll get you. We'll get you handled. I promise you that. All right. So there you have it. Super fast. Super easy. Uh, we will post uh, the link to this recipe on the Colorado Co uh, Beef Council Facebook page tomorrow. As we always say, just a huge thank you to our farmers, ranchers, and producers for having us. 
uh, and letting us host these events. We really appreciate it. Uh, and if you need to find today's recipe, other recipes, you can go to cobeef.com. Uh, under that cooking tab, we have a ton of different recipes for you. The beef locator map as well. And then if you're looking for more information on beef and you want to expand your beef horizons, you could talk to a rancher. Right? You could yeah. always ask your local rancher. Absolutely. Always right? talk to a rancher. That's probably going to be your best set um, to uh, get uh, get some of that information. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the Beef Council website, if you're looking for where a piece gets, comes from, there's cut sheets on there. There's um, diagrams as to where they come from. All that information is on the Colorado Beef Council website. Yeah. And that's the fun part of learning where your cups come from is getting onto the website. You can go to beefitswhatsfordinner.com as well. Uh, get over there. Look at those cut sheets. Look at the uh, uh, fabrication steps. Look at all of that and you'll see where it comes from. And then it always talks about taste, texture, tenderness, uh, and every single cut. Gives you the protein, gives you the vitamins, minerals. I mean, it's power pack. This smells absolutely amazing. It does. Just talk about that. All right, you guys, thank you so much. Huge thank you to Sally for hanging out with us tonight. We always appreciate having guests. It's the first rancher we've had, so we're pretty excited yeah. about it. And I don't think we're going to stop. I think we should have more and guests and hang out, right? I, yeah, it's kind of fun, isn't it? How's the Wi-Fi at your place? Could we go live from your oh, place? Oh, absolutely. I've got good Wi-Fi. Like in the middle of the pasture, we could go live? Uh, well, That's stretching it? The middle of the pasture might be stretching the bird, but we could. Could we hang out with critters and go live? Yes. <laughs> we can hang out with critters and go live. I think we should go live from a ranch. That's is it weird though if we're cooking meat while we're live with the critters? That's, see, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah. Cooking meat out in the pasture, you don't have any power. Gas grill. Okay. Uh, in the barbecue trailer. All right. Okay. We'll think about it. We'll come up with some fun things for you, but uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, and again, head over to cobeef.com. You can find the uh, beef locator map, find uh, amazing Colorado beef to fill your fridge, your bellies, your freezers, all of that good stuff. So. Thank you so much. We'll see you next month. Next month, we're going to get into comfort food. Because, listen, they launched pumpkin spice lattes today. Oh. Oh. I, it, that means, listen, it means fall is here. So next month, I think we're going to start talking about comfort foods. Maybe we'll do some pot roast. Maybe we'll do some chili, something fun like that. So stay tuned. We have a lot of cool stuff coming up. We'll see you soon.